Many parts of the country are struggling with crime and violence. This has a negative impact on the children who are exposed to these acts. Some are left with trauma and permanent scars. How can parents and teachers assist children who are victims of crime and violence? Psychologist Nikki Dawson joins me now to discuss this further. Thank you very much, Nikki, for your time this afternoon. So in, in addition, we were just talking about child hunger, but children from poor communities are also incredibly vulnerable uh, to ongoing violence in their communities. Uh, so it's not just on television, it's in their, their, their neighborhoods, in the streets that they walk, in the areas that they are supposed to be playing in. Um, what kinds of behavioral problems are we seeing in children who are living in communities where not only gang-related violence, but all other types of violence um, are rife? We're seeing all the kinds of things, I guess, that you would expect from somebody who's not feeling safe. So we would see kind of more impulsive behavior. We might see regression or delays in development and learning difficulties. We might see more mental health difficulties. So any kind of problem that you might expect to find when somebody's not in a, in a safe enough state of mind to learn or to grow or to think or to engage rationally with the world. And what kind of impact does that have on their ability to function normally, to learn at school, to form uh, you know, healthy relationships with their peers and with adults? So, yeah, a broad negative effect, really, and, and also on their physiology and their health, their physical health as well. So what happens is that the brain is really put into a fight-flight-freeze mode. And, and if they're in kind of chronic um, environments of danger, they're going to live in that, in that mode, in that um, state of mind. And, and their brain is going to be structured in a way to prioritize safety and prioritize quick thinking, impulsive behavior. And so there's not a lot of time for kind of really prioritizing social engagement um, and, and those kinds of, of functions, I guess, those human functions. How likely are children who are surrounded constantly by violence in their home or living environments to uh, enact violent acts themselves and to become violent as adults? Significantly more likely. So, so pretty much with, without exception, children who become violent, are, well, adults who become violent have some history of exposure to trauma. And, and so it's really a repetitive cycle, exactly as you describe, that one of the ways of coping with a violent environment or a crime environment is to become an aggressor yourself, to, to keep yourself safe through being aggressive. Um, and perpetuating acts that you've experienced or seen. So this is obviously a huge concern. Yeah. So there are certain charity organizations offering free counseling for children in these environments, but obviously that's, that's not you know, accessible to everyone. It's, it's impossible to get round to everyone who is dealing with this kind of trauma. What other help is there uh, for children in terms of interventions by uh, their parents, by their friends, uh, by teachers at school? What can be done? I think a very important thing to think about because, for example, if we think about teachers, children are going off into school environments where they're not in a state, their brain is not in a state for learning. And so doing things like just helping to calm their fight flight free system down a little bit before you get into learning can be really, really helpful to promote development. So that might be through doing things like encouraging movement or, or through singing um, or actually just through talking about how they're feeling, so inviting and children to kind of talk about what kind of state of mind they're in because sharing how you're feeling is, is really helpful and mm -hmm. um, in, in just kind of helping you feel safe again and I think importantly sharing with children what we're doing to try and keep them safe so really helping to, to explain to them what measures are in place to protect them to keep them safe can help just to, to um, decrease that sense of anxiety that sense of worry Nikki, the things that you're describing um, make me apprehensive because in the first instance, often the schools that children go to if they live in violent communities are also plagued by issues of being under-resourced, teachers being under-resourced, they're not capacitated to deal with the emotional needs of their learners, let alone manage with class numbers. And in the home environment, um, parents of children exposed to gang violence are faced every day by police who are incapable of you know, bringing gang violence 
you know, under control. So what are they supposed to say to children that you know, we're trying to keep you safe, but actually we're not doing a very good job? That's not going to make children feel better. What more can we do? And it's not that, that, that your suggestion, I'm not knocking your suggestions, the bigger picture just seems to be very overwhelming. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's why the most important things we need to do are to, to do everything we can to prevent exposure to violence in the first place. And that's why we really need to be investing in any initiatives that are, are achieving that or able to, to succeed in that. And that, that really is the kind of main thing we need to be focusing on because um, if we're exposing children to violence, they're going to be overwhelmed and, and these consequences are going to exist. And if we can't, as you say, kind of reassure them that they can be safe, then, then their brain is really in the most functional state it can be in, actually, which is to prioritize safety instead of learning. And, and it's the most functional way to be in that environment. And what we need to really do is actually change the environment for them to enable them to be able to learn and to grow and to relate. Thank you very much. Uh, Nikki Dawson speaking to us about the effect of violence on children.